Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Find 4 Kai's the Right Guys Grease. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So, we've annexed a decent chunk of Turkey, and I believe this episode, Russia's going to be attacking Germany. I'd be very surprised if they didn't. Because right now, like, I'm looking at these borders, and all I can think is that they look pretty, pretty exposed right now, Russia. Pretty, pretty exposed. I guess I, guess I don't know how many troops the Reichspact has. The answer is probably a lot. Russia, with only 92 divisions, is definitely lacking in the uh, the troop count, unfortunately. I have to say, like, what is in Russia's best interest? Because it can either do two things. It can either attack Germany right now with the backing of Ukraine and France, or it can attack Ukraine, Latvia, and Estonia and gobble up those territories really easily and then focus its attention on the Germans and I'm, I'm honestly not too sure which one's better for the AI to do I mean I can also theoretically attack Finland but um I don't think that's I mean how many does Finland have anything for them a decent industry but nothing too too crazy Let's go. I mean, what do we need right now? Still heavy tanks. We have a little bit of support equipment. We have 30,000 rifles. So once we're actually at war, I'm probably going to give Russia just like a lot of them. Can I see how many rifles Russia actually has? No, you know what? They actually have like 100,000 rifles. They, they should be fine. Maybe Serbia is missing out slightly. Nope, they also have 59,000 rifles. Everybody looks like they're doing pretty well. Except for Turkey. Turkey is kind of in a bad spot, but... How many men do they have? They have two divisions. So, division designer. Turkey. Let's just copy you. Like, does this use our troops? Yes, but not... A t uses 13,000. How many does it use of mine? Forty-three thousand. So, like, one point three five thousand? So let's train, you know, like, tw let's just train a full 24 stack of, um, Turkish troops. It's going to use a lot of our manpower for sure. So we're probably going to need to go to, like, survive requirement already. Unless there's anything I can do. Is there anything I can do to even boost up my own, um... No, I don't think there's anything else I can do to boost my recruitable population beyond what's already uh, available to us. So that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, of course, we want to trade with Russia, our, al our uh, actual ally here. But, you know, 24 stack Turkish troops. When will they be ready? April 3rd. Except for these guys. These guys need uh, slightly more... We have manpower. How much manpower do you have? The answer is zero. Okay. So. Let's cancel these two then. Yeah, so it's a 90-10 split. But I think it, you know, seems reasonable. Okay, so you guys have now pieced out. You have a little bit of uh, British Columbia under your control. But, you know, sure, why not? So the CSA is definitely going to beat the Americans. Or beat the Canadians, I should say. I mean, at least I'm pretty confident they are. Depending on how, like, how many troops does France have here, I'm not too sure. Like, if the Entente is able to send enough troops into this region, that could theoretically work out for them, I think. 
but it's a bit hard to say. Okay, so it is actually 1940 now, so a bunch of techs are no longer ahead of time, or at least slightly less ahead of time than they were in the past. That's the thing, like, can the CSA actually just annex Canada? I don't know, well, let me click these, uh, these things. Because every time I've seen it, CSA just pieces out the Canadians. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if the CSA can just annex all of Canada. What gives them a pretty big leg up, I would say. I think these guys are just stuck now. So, good work, Estonia. These guys are definitely dead. Estonia's gonna die. Latvia's gonna die. After that... It's a bit up in the air what exactly is going to be happening. Yeah, we're getting a negative 10% stability because we're at war. Well, 10% factory output penalty, which is not fantastic. So, I'm thinking, maybe we do do industrial socialism. It's going to revert our um, consumer goods back to 25%. But that 10% factory output's not too bad. I mean, it's going to take what? It's only taking 5. It's probably going to go up to... Um, probably 8 or 9 factories here. Those will be building at 7. Which isn't horrible. It could be better. Also, does this give us political power? No, just pop popularity. Can't do that because it needs 49 factories, which we do not have. You get political power? You do. Balkan democracy is two, plus 200. The thing right now, I probably would actually prefer the political power gain. Which is something that you typically don't care too much about, I would say. But we need to change so many of our laws right now. That we're, we are for sure lagging behind. We got our stability up. Let's empower Parliament. I mean, I know I could theoretically just like not do a focus for a little while. But I think that also sets us back more than I would like. So Estonia is dead. Definitely goes to the Russians. Will you now just immediately declare war on Latvia as well? Not too sure. Like, Ukraine, all things considered... Like, you, Ukraine's actually pushed their way into Reichspack territory. Which is way more, way more progress than I would have had originally expected them to do. The thing is, the AI keeps wanting to put their troops all the way back into Asia, which is... I would say a mistake. Somehow, how are you holding off literally everybody else in, in China? I don't know. Russia's just fine against Ukraine. I don't know why you would do that, seeing as you should have a button in your decisions just to attack them instantly. That seems like a mistake on the AI's part, but okay. We can ignore that for now. It's like, what else can we do? Like, if we wait for Germany to actually win the Wildkrieg. I think that means that the United States of Austria couldn't actually join in. I don't know if that helps us at all or not, though. Okay, yeah, Russia just presses the button. So you just alert the AI by doing that uh, focus. And then you attack them. So, seems like a good idea. Good work there, guys. Okay, so one of our tank divisions has now formed. What are you missing? You are missing manpower. What is Turkey on, by the way? They are on volunteer only. You should definitely change that, like, as soon as you can. And yeah, now the internet... Actually, Germany's gonna have, a, like, a non-aggression pact probably with the Russians. 
Because they're both fighting Ukraine at the moment. But Ukraine, yeah, Ukraine cannot survive all of this. They are for sure going to die. I guess I'll accept the non-aggression pact. I don't know how that's really going to affect things going forward, unfortunately. Let's look at the anti-air stuff. Might as well. And we'll just replace with these artillery once we're done researching. Yeah, Turkey's already built like, a, a decent amount of uh, troops. So, Turkey, give me your eight divisions here. Thank you very much. Send them straight into Blue Army. Yeah, this is the anti-Austrian army. These are these are the anti-Bulgarian troops. And we'll see. You'll know, see what Russia does. Yeah, it's like as soon as Russia joins the war, Ukraine just starts to fall apart, which isn't a huge surprise. I think we all knew that this was going to be coming. They still shouldn't have done it. Like, for sure? How do you only have nine factories? That seems pretty low, if you ask me. You're not in a faction, right? No, you are, you're just independent. We'll see what you guys do now that you're actually at war in uh, Indonesia. That definitely can change things around. But yeah, no, Ukraine is very much deceased. I I don't. I don't know if that's the right play or not, though. Like, I can understand it. Like, I don't I don't think it's necessarily the wrong play. It, that ju it just depends on how that changes things with, with Germany. It's either Germany and all these little guys are going to move all their troops over to fight the French. Or, they're going to keep all their troops on the Russian border. In fact, they say military access through uh, Ruthenia. I mean, Ruthenia, I think, can theoretically leave the Reichspact to join up with the Russians. But I don't know if it's too late to do that. Let's train up one of these guys. Am I losing a lot of manpower in these, um, occupations? I might be. Russia, can you give me some support of my garrisons? You don't have the manpower to give us? What do you mean? You only have 53,000 manpower. Pardon? Doesn't seem uh, extremely good. Seems actually pretty bad. I mean, theoretically, I think if Austria joins the war now with Germany and declares war in France, if after that point Russia attacks Germany, I think Austria just stays out of it. I don't know if they can join all the wars. I believe what the event actually does, it declares, Austria declares war on everybody that Germany's at war with. I think that's exactly how it works. But I don't know if Germany ends up at war with somebody after Austria's already done that event, if they can still do anything. Like if they can, if they would actually be able to join a war against Russia, for, for example. The answer is I just do not actually know. Because we, we also need political power to do all the regaining Greece focuses as well. And these are 
180 days each. I need Balkan democracy, please and thank you. We are going to empower Parliament in one more day, and then we're going to do Balkan democracy. Yeah, Ukraine is... I mean, if anything, I'd like them to die, like, a little bit faster. I mean, if Russia attacked... only Austria first, like, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Also, um... Britain is doing a pretty good invasion here. Do you have military access? No, like, Germany actually cannot move troops in the, into, um... the Netherlands here. That does make things kind of interesting. Um, I'm not too sure where they are going to be in this list. Yeah, they're 24%. And Germany cannot send support here. Because the Dutch technically are not part of any faction. Thank you for the Independence Day and the extra 25 political power. I absolutely need it. Definitely don't want war propaganda. I mean, war economy would be nice. But I don't think that actually helps us out at this exact moment. I think just getting cores first. I mean, how much... Okay, manpower. You have 648,000. 141,000. 828,000. We definitely want to do the cores. The cores probably will give us more manpower than just upgrading, uh... Actually, that's probably not true, necessarily, going from... extensive to service by requirements. But this has a bunch of penalties associated with it, so... If we can avoid that, that would be nice. Okay, so there's a new leader of the Radical Socialist. I don't think that matters to us at all. Okay, so the first of the Turkish troops have been trained. I guess put them on another border with, um... You know, a border with Romania. And have them spearhead their way to Bucharest. Does this make any sense? I'm not too sure. Does anybody have any good bonuses I actually want to give them? I have an infantry expert. I think infantry expert... More or less is kind of always good. Don't want war propaganda against the French. I really don't think that's going to benefit us at all. And Kiev has fallen. I'm surprised Ukraine... I guess they still have Sevastopol. So it's probably going to take Russia a little while to actually get their way down there. I mean, I could just fight a war going against the Austrians, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that's a... Uh, a smart play. We need something decisive. Or not decisive, like surprising, I guess. If we need Russia or, I guess, maybe Serbia. Serbia can attack. No, you actually cannot. You can't do anything because you're not actually a, a faction leader. So you're just kind of stuck doing almost nothing. You've actually kind of done most of your focus tree already. That is a nice little pocket. All those troops are going to be killed. I can notice that these Russian troops are not marching their way across the river, even though there is... Nobody to oppose them. Definitely, like, one of the issues I have with the AI in this game is just... They can easily do something, and yet they just... Don't. Did we get anti, uh... Yeah, we don't have the anti-air quite yet. We'll have it in 35 more days. How's everybody else doing? Is there definitely a war with the International as well? But are you the leader of the faction? No, so I think as soon as Argentina capitulates, you are probably just off the hook. So there's, looking at this, there's no way Argentina's gonna win. Bolivia! I don't know what Bolivia's gonna do. I mean, they're also worth the entire of the Internationale. I mean, this looks like a really weird conflict you guys have gotten yourself into. Because I think as Argentina capitulates, you were no longer going to be in the war. But Chile's going to get absolutely destroyed by Bolivia. There's really no question about that. And also this whole nonsense. Is Canada actually going to fight to the bitter end? 
That seems like a mistake, but you know what do I know? Ukraine has crossed into Russia proper, but I don't think that yeah, definitely not enough to save them. So with my very little political power I have here. I mean again I could just go into um straight transfer tool and do this. So what I'm gonna do is just white Ruthenia can have that territory. It's gonna look kind of like Rouse. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit done. I mean, the, the alternative is I just spam the bot long enough to give it to Russia. How many points does Russia need? 2,000? I guess because technically Poland took Kiev. But I think those borders will look kind of ugly. So, I mean, these, these borders are already kind of a mess. So, we're just gonna done. Control Shift H. Control A. Transfer all that to Russia. For an off straight transfer tool. Hide it again. And there we go. We got this kind of ugly border for sure. But now what is Russia going to do? Will they attack Latvia next? Will they try to push their way just directly into the, the Reichs Pact? I'm not too sure. And if the British actually take Rotterdam, that should actually get these guys just to capitulate. And that will kind of throw this whole thing into um, disarray. But again, Russia has claims over all this territory. Even, okay, not up to Poland quite yet. Can I even claim Poland? No. They can open up the straits, but they're already in our uh, their faction, so. That's fine. Okay, so they did end their war. Which again is dumb. Like the CSA so clearly was um was winning. Yes, yeah, so I guess you're not at war anymore, you're just in the faction by yourself. Argentina now exists once again. Cause the thing is like the CSA could easily annex all the Canada right there. I mean they gained New England out of it. I mean that's something. And I'm really having a crisis in Quebec. Okay, well, you guys have fun with that. Wait, what, what's everybody else? So you did inv invade uh, Latvia. I knew you would. The thing is, like, I just don't want to take my troops off of the Austrian border. Because that, that scares me. If I move all of my troops out of... I mean, what I could do is I could just put these Turkish troops... You are now the green army onto this border and move my actual decent troops to the front lines. Can I deploy the rest of these troops? The answer is no, because I think they're on the manpower. Unfortunately. Have you been training up more troops yourself? No. It's like I would like to send my troops. North. But I don't think that's really a possibility. Oh yeah, I can't even change my conscription laws anymore because we're not technically at war anymore. Not that that's a, a bad thing. I mean, more political power down here would be nice. More political power gain. Yeah, I think we need to do the industrial. The socialism is probably going to be what's going to help us out the most here. What are you missing out on? You're missing uh, what, 28 light tanks. But I think it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks to everybody for watching my thumbs If you enjoyed, give a thumbs up. Nigel, we can always thumb down. If you want to subscribe, and goodbye.